In this unit we're going to take a look at how to create and work with filled regions and masking regions. You can see on screen I've got three objects here. Two of those, the one at the bottom left and the middle, are filled regions and the top right is an example of a masking region. So let's go ahead and create a filled region. I've got a call-out view here of an external wall so you can see the block work and brick work and I'm going to create a filled region on the face of the inner leaf to simulate a timber batten. So I'm going to basically create a detail with it. So first of all switch to the annotate menu and then on the detail panel you've got the option for region. If we just have a quick look in the drop down I've got a choice between filled region and masking region. I will cover masking regions a little later in the unit but for now let's go with the filled region. Revit immediately switches to sketch mode. He'll recognize the green tick and the red cross. The draw palette so we can choose how we define our lines so we can get it into the system and this is basically for drawing or sketching out the boundary of the filled region. We've got a choice of line styles for that boundary, including invisible lines, which I'll show you a little later in the unit. So for now, let's go and define the perimeter of our timber batten. Probably the easiest way to do that is using the rectangle tool. So corner to corner. Just going to do this by eye. Obviously, you can set these to exact dimensions. If we look over to the properties palette, the type selector shows us the different type of filled regions we have available to us. Now filled regions are a system family so again a little later in the unit I'll show you how to create your own new types but for now there's a choice of filled region types that have come with the Autodesk template. I'll just choose, let's choose Dagnall Up as an example. So we've chosen a type, basically a hatch. We've set the perimeter hit the green tick and Revit goes ahead and creates the filled region. Now remember filled regions are a detail item so just like text, just like dimensions they only exist in the view in which you create them. You can create them in any type of view i.e. Uh, call out sections, elevations, plan views, uh, reflected ceiling plan views. Obviously we've just chosen a call out view here but you can see We've created a detail, a timber batten against our wall. Now, whether you should be modeling that batten uh, with a wall sweep or whether you should be using a standard detail component, and we looked at detail components uh, in a previous unit, or whether you simply draft it out using a filled region is totally up to you. There is no right or wrong, and there are most certainly pros and cons of each of those methods. Uh, but if you do cho choose to go with a filled region, that's how you do it. So it's just annotate, choose region, go into sketch mode, use any of those tools on the draw palette to define where you want the filled region to be, and hit the green tick, and of course choose a, a filled region type, so depending on what pattern you need in there, hit the green tick and Revit immediately creates it. So you can actually pick that up and move it after. You do have grips on all the boundary line segments, so you can actually make adjustments to where those boundary lines are. But in essence, that's how you create filled regions. OK, so here's the filled region we've just created. So if we go ahead and select it, it brings up the currently selected type in the type selector. We can go and change that after to a different filled region type. And you can see the hatch pattern changes accordingly. So pick from any of the ones that are currently loaded into our project. And because filled regions are system families, we can actually go ahead and create new types within the project. So if I select the filled region and we hit the edit type button, hit duplicate. Now I'll just leave the name the same there for now. Revit adds number two to differentiate it. So let's just go with that as a name. Let's have a look at the type parameters. So the main one at the top is you'd expect fill pattern. What pattern do you actually want in that filled region? Now if you click in there and hit the little square at the end with the, the three dots, you get a choice of all the fill patterns currently loaded into this project. And you can see there's 
there's quite a range in there so let's just pick one of these earth now you can actually edit those patterns now you can see this is set to drafting at the moment that's quite important because you want that pattern whatever those line um, separations are set at you want them to be the same distance apart regardless of the scale of the view because remember this is a drafting detail um, so it's, it's fundamentally different from let's say brick coursing where you'd use a model hatch pattern because you want that coursing to scale up or down with the size of the wall so we're going to stick with drafting it's okay background do you want to be able to see through the filled region or have it mask out things behind so I'm going to leave it on opaque line weight that's what it's going to actually create the, um, the the fill pattern with so I'll leave that as one for now and we're going to go with the color black there's a range of other parameters you can fill in there if you so desire but uh, for most standard generic components that come with Revit those are left blank and there's probably no need to fill those in certainly in the case of a filled region I would just leave those blank so hit OK and there is our new filled region type with the new pattern let's just go and very quickly change a couple of these to, to see the effects change the background to transparent let's bump up the line weighting and let's change the color it's okay apply okay so now we can actually see through the detail the fill pattern is in a, a, a thicker line style and it's drawn in a red color Now I'm just going to take a few moments to talk about draw order. So here are three filled regions I've created, different patterns. There's a solid black one there and a couple of other ones here. So if I pick one of those up and move it close to the other one, so it overlaps, and do the same with the, the black one, just so they all overlap a little bit, you can actually see that they are layered and you can control what we call the draw order where they appear in that hierarchy so if we take the black one which is currently at the top or closest to us if you like if you're looking into the screen with it selected and you look on the ribbon menu you can actually see that you can control how it's arranged the draw order so we can send it backwards and there's a little drop down there do you want to send it back one layer in the hierarchy or do you want to send it right to the back let's just send it back once so now it's behind this one here but still in front of the other one just select it again and we can send it backwards again which will send it right to the back now the important thing to note is even with these right at the back they still sit on top of the model so if you like this call out is a, a viewport or a window into the model world where we've sliced through this section and all these detail items and annotations it's as if they've been stuck to the the pane of glass the window that we're looking through into the model so even with them right at the back they will always still be on top of and mask out your model elements behind Now there may be times when you use a filled region where you want to see the pattern but you don't actually want to see the boundary lines themselves. I'm going to show you how to do that now. So a typical example might be on a site plan you want to hatch an area of that plan to show maybe a, um, where the car park's going to be or roughly where the building footprint's going to be. So sort of at a conceptual or strategic level you just want to hatch an area um, but you don't actually necessarily need to see the boundary of that hatch so go ahead and create your filled region I'm going to retrospectively change the the boundary lines here but you could do this step um, that I'll show you now as you actually create it in the first place so I'm going to hit the edit boundary basically takes us back to that sketch mode as if we were creating the filled region from scratch I'm going to go ahead and select all the boundary lines I'm just going to put a fence around it now you can see now with the boundary lines selected the their their line style is thin lines all you need to do is change it to invisible lines that's one of the the system um, line type families 
hit invisible lines, go ahead and recreate the filled region by hitting the green tick, deselect and you can see now you're still left with a filled region with the same pattern but you can no longer see the actual boundary lines themselves. So again probably a limited use but there probably will be scenarios where you need to do that where you want something hatched out but it just looks neater if you don't actually see the boundary itself. Quite often when you're creating your filled regions they actually relate to the underlying model whether that's in elevation, section or plan. So let's make up an example here to, to demonstrate this. So again we're going back to our cavity wall Let's go with a filled region, so in fact actually going with a masking region, I want to mask out the model behind. So let's say we want to create um, a duct through the wall. Now again you, you could actually create a 3D model element, a component family, so that it's visible in elevation and sections. Um, but for now, for this example, I'm simply going to draft on uh, using a filled region to represent this duct. So I'm going to go with the rectangle tool there and just put this duct right across the wall there. Hit the green tick. Because it's a masking region, uh, it's just a, a white filth. It's masked out in the model behind. Now, if we were to go into the makeup or the structure of the actual wall itself, the wall type, so we hit the edit structure button, you'll remember that from the, the unit on walls, we can actually change the layer thicknesses or add additional layers into this wall type. Because this filled region or this masking region is just a detail element that sits on top, then Yes, we've traced over it and used it as a template, but it doesn't really relate. Um, it doesn't uh, have a relationship with the underlying model. However, we can actually constrain the boundary lines if we want to the underlying model so that when the model changes position or thickness, this will automatically stretch accordingly. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, just before I do, do that, just to clarify, we've created the duct through the wall let's say uh, as the design develops we want to go and increase the cavity width we would like all these details to flex accordingly we don't want to have to come back through all these call outs and manually select the masking region pick the grips and change it accordingly because um, what you'd actually find is if i move this wall over you can see there that the at the moment the detail item i.e. the masking region is just orphaned it's just floating on top of this view so I'm just going to undo that put that wall back but let's go in and select the masking region edit the boundary now I'm going to go and pick one of those lines I'm just going to move it away slightly it doesn't matter how far you move it but just move it back until it snaps back onto the wall and notice before you do anything else the little padlock which is open at the moment Remember those constraints, we can actually click on the symbol and actually lock just that piece of boundary line to the underlying uh, face of the wall. You can do the same here, select that section of boundary line, pull it away, snap it back on. Again, we've got the padlock, the constraint symbol, it's open at the moment, it's not constrained. Go ahead and lock the padlock to constrain it and green tick to remake the masking region. Now if we select the underlying wall element and I hit edit type and we go into the structure, the build up of that wall and let's go and increase the thickness of the insulation so it's currently on 75 mil let's just put 150 mil in so there's a noticeable difference when we remake the wall hit OK it's okay again you can see the wall increases in thickness and now the masking region has actually stretched accordingly because the left and right boundary edges are constrained to the face of the wall so a neat little trick there uh, again you really get into the heart of BIM the more you can automate the coordination of your details with the model the better 
less work for you to do to keep going through all your different views as you develop your design and change thicknesses and build ups that all your details still match so to a certain extent you can if you like semi automate the coordination of certain aspects of your design within Revit i.e. the details to the underlying model and that completes this unit to get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point, you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.